Hello guys, uh, welcome to episode 1 of a small Haskell series that I'm going to do, um, inspired by uh, uh, Mr. T. Soding, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, probably not, uh, but, um, and so essentially what we'll be doing is I'll pick up uh, some competitive programming problems, which will be easy ones, and I'll try to solve them using Haskell. And uh, with the intent that um, uh, both me and the, the viewers uh, might uh, take away and learn something about the language. Uh, because I think, uh, I, I really think Haskell is, is, is quite an amazing language. Uh, obviously for easier problems, I, I don't think uh, the solutions would get uh, complex enough, I, say, I suppose, but, but we will get started, it's a series, so I'll, I'll start with maybe easy problems and then work my way up, and we'll see where it goes. All right, uh, just let's see, let's get started. Um, let's look at this book called Repeated String. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, first thing I want to do is uh, just uh, I'll just create some boilerplate of, um, by means of a small utility that I have, which is it's essentially there are a bunch of templates, it just creates a, a lot of scaffolds and directory with the uh, so, yeah, scaffold the directory with uh, some of the stuff that I would need um, with, a, with a very basic Haskell template. Uh, we'll probably go over this, but, but yeah, let's, let's see. Going back to the problem, there is a string S of lowercase English letters that is repeated infinitely many times. Number one, okay. Given an integer n, find and print the number letter is the first n letters of the infinite string. Right uh, away, it seems like fairly straightforward because uh, what we can do is no okay. Yeah, what we can do is um, so Haskell has this function called cycle, uh, which what it does is it creates an infinite list of uh, repetitions of uh, a list, um, and as you would know, string is essentially a list of characters. So we can apply cycle on it to get sort of like an infinite list of uh, the same string repeating again and again. And so first n letters, which means we can just take n out of that. And then uh, we just need to essentially count the number of a's in it. I don't know, okay, it seems stupid, honestly. So the input would look like this. Let me create a test input file and we use this. Okay. Um, so the, uh, the the solution I described essentially is more or less a brute force solution. What I what I notice already is that clearly we can we can actually do a, a mathematical computation and get the, the there's an answer actually in, and in that um, case we wouldn't have to do a lot of the, the things that I was talking about and it would save both time complexity as well as space honestly but uh, since it's really learning Haskell I think I'll probably solve them in both ways so the one suboptimal and maybe the optimal one, and then hopefully we may be even be able to compare between the two and see, okay. Um, right, so first thing I probably want to do is get the input, right. So let's pass this input. Uh, essentially what we get from the input is um, a string and integer, right? But uh, for brevity, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to show you this. Okay, 
this process. So let me let me maybe slightly explain what's going on over here. Right? So the main for the main function, what I use is uh, Haskell's native function. Maybe some other. Okay, Haskell's native function in Perl. And um, what this does essentially is, uh, and I really like it a lot. What it does is it, it takes a function which uh, which will receive a string and then uh, return a string, and uh, and then is and so the expectation of this function essentially will receive the entire standard input as one giant string, and it's up of course up to the function what it does with it, uh, but ultimately it should return back some string. Uh, which then the interact function uh, uses that value to actually just uh, output it on standard output, right? So as simple as that. So okay. So and so now what we do is so we take interact and like I said, it it, it needs a function that maps uh, that takes a string and then returns a string. So what we do uh, to break this down is we first split uh, that string, what we say from interact uh, by words, which means we just, it's, it just works like uh, uh, like split in most languages, uh, a more generalized split because it splits by new lines and empty spaces. Uh, right? And so we split them. So when we use this, we get a list of strings, which is, uh, just all the words in our input. Uh, we pass this to our solve function, right? And a solve function, as you can see, it takes this list of strings and then returns an integer. And so, uh, an in integer is uh, not a string, so we just uh, use the show function to convert the, the integer to a string, which then the interact function will be able to output it. Uh, on screen, right? So just to demonstrate a little bit of what this might look like, what we can do is, so we have a list of strings. I could, and maybe, yeah, that's a okay. Maybe we'll say length, right? Oops, that one. So let's say length, which means I, I'm essentially giving you the length of the number of elements in the list of strings, so essentially, how many words there are, right? Right, and uh, and we use it, and, and we'll be outputting that to the screen. So now that I have run this, I, obviously I have, I have, a, I have a bit of a setup that allows me to do this quickly. Uh, so it, it has basically compiled the, the code, and then it executed the binary with the test input. And so, like you can see, it says two because obviously it's just two words, right? Now, what I can do is uh, let's parse the input, right? So the first thing we get, let's say yes, uh, let the problem statement says, and then the next thing, in fact, let's not use this. Let's use this so because we know there are just two elements. We can actually do this. So we can use Haskell's pattern matching to. Um, so this uh, pattern matching to uh, match it against uh, because we know that this is two elements uh, we can just pattern match it like this so s will get assigned to the, the first string and then s will get assigned to the the number string like it's still a string we haven't passed it yet so what i'm going to do is when n is read of ns okay uh, um, Let's do this just for clarity. Typically, we don't need this, and I'll show you. I'll sh yeah, we, we, preferably we won't need it because um, we should be able to let Haskell's type inference uh, handle it. But then it is obviously subject to how clear we will be, uh, we will be in in in, in, in stating that. As of now, it's not clear, and that's why it contains. As of now, it's not clear what type this is going to be. So we manually coerce it to a string, to an integer, sorry, 
right so now that we have n which is an integer and we have zoom s uh, uh, okay yeah so like i said so let's build first the the naive sort of almost a brute force solution which means we cycle the string s and we take n we take the first n elements from it then then we need to essentially count the number of the number of a's in it so now in order to do a count there are also multiple ways to do it i could either filter this list and match only on the a's and then get a length of it and things like that but i think the the logical way to do it probably is to use the fold function which is essentially like a, 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 a reduce function um, right uh, or with what it does is it iterates through each element uh, having a initial value as an accumulator and then performs based on what you define it will perform that operation on it and the idea would be eventually we'll have one value which yeah so in this case what we want to do is we want to compare maybe with this right so we essentially what we want to say is this equality you want to see give me the right result so this, this is this is just a boolean check and let me we will not do it with the fold right away let's so what we will do is we say filter yeah. so we will filter all the a's and we can say we can say So it should work. Seven, which is right. Um, but obviously, this is going to be a bit slow. So let's try. Uh, let's try building uh, the more optimal solution. So let me get my mental math done. So the first thing we do is we calculate uh, the number of A's. Or, um, before we get to that optimal solution, what I want to do as an exercise is instead of doing this ugly bit, let's try to actually use the full function. Let's try. And that should be all right. Uh, so what I'll do is. Uh, I'll have R and then the character C, right? Um, and so we'll say that let me replace this entire thing with just F, and so I'll say, oops, and sorry, I'll say F, which takes um, sort of like an accumulator, I don't know, maybe let's call it ACC for gravity, but just hold on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to give zero as the starting value of the subject. So yes, the accumulator, and then we would have the individual element uh, within the list. Let's say x. Uh, right. and so what we can do is we can say if x is equals a, uh, then We return accumulator plus one other one. Just turn the accumulator. I think I think this should work. Right? And run it. It should work. It seems to make sense. Um, yeah, it works. So um, yeah, if it's so, if this takes some integer, integer. And it turns on the right? Yes. So, oh no, 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 no,
Let's fix this again. Yeah. Um, so since we are running, so again, so this is not required because Haskell has type inference, but then just for clarity, we are doing this. So now we know that this function f essentially, since we are going over, um, In these in the list of characters, you know, um, what we will do, what, what this does is, um, if you see the accumulator, which is this, basically the starting value in the first cycle, and then you know, every every cycle, uh, every subsequent cycle, the accumulator value gets carried over, and then um, right, it gets accumulated essentially. And so this nice thing which Haskell has is we can use, and uh, it's called guard clauses. So if I'm going to have guard clauses, uh, which is to say that you can have, it's almost like a, a switch statement, I guess, or a case statement based on a programming language you come from. And so it almost means that, um, well, it means that um, you can provide conditional um, and Conditional logic for your functions evaluation, saying, okay, if uh, some predicate is true, then your function should behave in this way, or if some other predicate is true, it should behave in this way, blah blah blah. blah. And uh, otherwise, um, and then at the end, you should probably have like an otherwise statement, which means this is a catch all, which is if any previously mentioned predicates don't apply, it would. Into the predicate. Uh, another way to write this function is also using Haskell's pattern matching. So you can say, I think this would also look fairly decent. Um, right? even, even this essentially does the same thing. This means the same thing. We should be explicitly setting up two edge cases where we pattern match on the character value. So if it is A, we add one to the accumulator. Uh, if it's anything else, we just return the accumulator. Uh, so we end up counting the other values. But I think, I don't know, I, I, somehow for some reason, like uh, the guard clauses syntax better for such simplistic use cases. Uh, especially when you're not using the cushion. When you're using the cushion, um, I prefer this style. But again, it's a matter of preference. They're both equivalent. Okay, so now that we have this using for slightly, slightly better, I guess, in, in the readability, and also we learn how fold works. Now, coming with uh, coming to the optimal solution now. So the optimal solution, what we need down is, we will come, it depends on a bunch of things. Uh, let's see, okay. it depends on the length of the string, it depends on the number of A's in that string, yeah. Which is, uh, I think, let's just for the uh, sake of clarity. Uh, takes um, string and times an integer. Right? Uh, so all this could be is. So, F0 is So now what we can do Thank mm -hmm. you. 
used it's used here right take and now take function goods expects an integer as its first argument and since since we are using it that way we now don't need to explicitly say that uh, this needs to be passed as an integer because because in our usage of n it is clear that n needs to be an int so this would automatically pass it as an integer nice okay and uh, I don't like this, mm. and so the the, the uh, one other maybe nice thing here. So now let me say count a. Oops, yeah, count a. Um, takes the string as its argument and then returns an integer, right? But um, so here we are actually leveraging. Uh, Haskell's um, Kareem uh, nature of functions, which means, uh, which what it really means is every function definition is, a, is it always returns a function. Um, uh, it always returns a function that maps from one value to the other, unless, until you apply it. <clears throat> till the end and you get a ranking which means if you look at let's see one thing let's go to okay so we'll do jitsi and also um yeah so So we always know the type of count is that it goes from a string to end. Now, but then let's look at uh, what the type of folder is now. So this looks a bit complicated, but essentially uh, all it does, uh, all it says is, okay, it receives a function as its argument, which goes from some type B to type A, and then must return a value of type B, uh, because obviously your accumulator type cannot change. Um, and then it should receive a value b, which is typically, which is basically your the initial value. And then, then this is applied on a foldable, a foldable type. List is a foldable type. In our case, we are applying it to a list of characters, which is a synonym of a string or the other way around. String is a synonym for a list of characters. Hmm. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah. See. Yeah. Yeah. Listen. So, and then it ultimately returns the value of type P, which is basically your final accumulator value, right? Uh, but now, let's say we say fold L, and maybe for the purpose. Just say, uh, yeah, let's just say plus, yeah, because, yeah, let's just say plus, right? And so now you see the type of this function has changed, right? Because we have uh, what, what Haskell did is uh, it basically did a partial application, right? Um, so Folder uh, expects to receive a function which maps from B to B and then turns a B and then it receives further arguments. Right now, when you provide one of the arguments, um, Haskell 
uses the scurrying ability wherein it then gives back a function with the with one less argument. So basically, for little of plus is essentially the remaining, which says uh, the it expects a one of type B, which is basically your initial value, and then a foldable of type A, which is in our case a list of characters, and then we expect to return. And then similarly, we can actually go ahead and let's say when you say this. Now we've also provided the, the initial value, and so now all that's remaining is um, an input of string, uh, sorry, a list. Right, so we could do this, for instance, and then it says this is just basically a number, which would obviously be the output value. Um, so if we were to actually just call this, it would obviously just say zero because there's nothing in the list. Right. Um, but in our case now, so what we do is we say count a is equivalent to fold uh, of f of zero, which means if you look at this guy. Right, which is saying that you know, it expects to receive a, a, a type of foldable P and then we return a value P, right? And, uh, and, and that's, that, that's the foldable B is actually also the, which is a string in our case, is also the thing that count A expects to receive. So we don't have to explicitly specify this because we can just remove it in. and it's called data reduction by the way uh, this h length description is nice it's called data reduction so it as well allows you to omit specifying this because they are essentially mathematically equivalent you don't have to specify the the input argument because both the left hand side and the right hand side expect that okay and in my rant okay. that took uh, far too long so now, coming back to the original solution, the optimal solution that we wanted. Now, yes, so what, what preferably we want to do is count the number of A's in S, okay, which is any right now. And then we, yeah, then we have the length of the string. Probably won't need it eventually, but yeah, until you use the value uh, in a context that indicates what type it should be, until then you have to be explicit. Right now, we're not using this uh, the value then, so yeah. So now, yeah, so we have m. Um, what we can do is we can. Divide n. It's in, in this case, what is it? Ten. Yeah. You can divide ten by three, and that gives. Oh, let's use this instead of that. We don't want fractions. When we divide ten by three, we get three, and three start to. Uh, three start to go up is six. The reason this is the case is because okay um, because of the overflow. Um, we will get ten characters. The cycle makes it so easy, but there is mostly simple math we can do here. So we can first get. So we know six, right? And so now, how many characters are remaining? Which is, which actually is more than three. So there's just one character remaining, which means we take this many characters from our string, count the number of A's, on, keep the number of A's in this, and then add the both of them. That will be our answer, right? So okay, yeah, I mean, that's confusing. We'll get to that in a bit. So this is the length of the entire string. This is the count of A's in our current string, which is not really relevant yet. So let me remove it. But I will need it eventually, but not right away. Um, 
So now, now that now we have this, so I'll call it like M, N, which is basically multiple. How many multiple? So this is do N. That's all. And the problem is, yeah, no, not a problem, but what I need to think about is the fact that it is obviously possible that this value is smaller than the length of the line. Just a big deal, right? Uh, if you say do 1, 3, just gives me 0. Yeah, and that's, that's possibly true because this is not a, so yeah. So we have, this is basically a uh, value representing the number of times our string will repeat the number of exact times. Right? And then, then we have the leftover, the leftover length, RL, for lack of a better word, would be this, yes. And so now we can bring that. Our final answer will then be um, mn star mn plus i. I believe so. I believe the map checks on. Take seven. So the nice thing, let, let me do one last thing. We'll get a quick comparison on this, okay? And now it using the word solve. Okay, and I'm going to turn this to the other. So let's um, So this took about 0 0.056 seconds. Obviously, our input example is just um, okay. now I'll compare this. Which is strange. This guy. This might be strange. Right? I definitely expect this to be faster. But I think the reason this is slower, I think, is because of the, the fact that I'm put right now is too slow. Yeah, I think so. This. This definitely for larger inputs this this will be faster because this is just pure math. So let's okay, let's just copy this, let's just try it out. I think it should be more um, expect I don't expect it to be to give me a wrong answer though. I don't think so. Let's see. The sample test has passed flawlessly. So interesting. So there is something, something wrong in the logic. So A N right? M N gives us which could be zero. Oh no, oh, this is wrong. We have to count the number of A's in. Okay. So I'm going to do ENS guy. Now what we need to do is uh, let's see. 
take RM from S and we have to add uh, this. This is the right one. It looks hard. <laughs> this is the right answer. Look at how how we the cycle solution works. On paper, in theory, that definitely is a much slower um, slower algorithm. It has to be slow. But let's see. I may be wrong actually. Maybe Haskell is able to optimize better than I think. Um, and this will not necessarily be done to a certain unless some test case is born because then you go, oh yeah, awesome, awesome, see? Yeah. Let's see, it should definitely be time limited. So yeah, I was right. right so that solution obviously is, uh, that that's basically like a brute force solution and that is going to be extremely slow. Um, had we not built our optimal solution, we would still be made struggling as things. But yeah, I mean this was a simple math problem, so good. Alright. Alright guys, um I think that'll be all. Um hope, hope, hope you guys like it. Um do let me know. And I'll be back with the similar content soon. Right.